lot of you guys have shared our journey with Stella and all of her issues. Um, a lot of you guys were along with us while we shared our story with equinedevoladvocate.com, a specialist in horse training and um, we shared our story with her and she featured us on her podcast at Equine Devil Advocate on Podbeam or on Facebook or on Spotify. And a lot of you guys expressed interest and were able to go and listen to her podcast. So I asked her if it was okay if I shared it on our YouTube channel. I wanted you guys to hear everything that happened and what the conclusion to her opinion on Stella was. Um, at the very end, she includes a letter from us, from me, saying how I felt about the situation and what I felt like my answer and response was. Um, I did end up crying at the end of that video and a little bit through it because for some reason I just felt so emotional. I, I don't even know why. I just, I think a lot of it was because we were talking about Stella. She was out there in her stall at night and we were all discussing Stella like she just was a rock on the, on the grass and, and we were deciding her fate and it just, I don't know, it made me feel super emotional because Stella is a living, breathing soul, a spirit, an animal, and I don't know how to express it, but it just overwhelmed me at the time. But anyway, I'm gonna let you guys listen to it, and before I do, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. Woman did say that she saw so much compassion and caring from all of you guys that weighed in on her website and I agree with her. You guys have been supporting. The way you guys support us and try and help us is just so unbelievable and so amazing and incredible. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. All right, happy listening. Good afternoon everyone and yes today is follow-up Sunday the podcast brought to you from equine devil's advocate um, Sunday is supposedly a day of rest but more often than not it's actually a day of frantic activity perhaps you've been up at the crack of dawn preparing and showing and competing well pause in your busy day and let us look at the results of our specialist topic question which was, of course, put forward by Laura from Day by Day Vlogs. We would, of course, like to say a big thank you to all of you for all your votes and correspondence. Now, just before I get into those, I would just like to say there were a good number of you that emailed in with questions of your own regarding your own problems that you were having with your horses. Because of this, we here at Equine Devil's Advocate have decided to put our heads together and formulate a way in which we can help you to overcome those problems. Obviously, whilst keeping your dignity and your privacy very much intact. We do have an outline formula, so just hang on in there and bear with us and we will keep you posted when it's up and running. I will also mention that there was a correspondence from a lady with a cob. It was a, a gypsy cob called Rupert, and I believe he was ridden by her granddaughter. Well, we did try and reply to you, but actually your email is not working. So if it's now up and running, please do get back in touch. And I would also like to announce that uh, another specialist topic question, our next one, was put forward by somebody. This was actually put forward by a lady called Claire. She's in Michigan in uh, America, USA. And she has recently discovered a real affinity and passion for hot-blooded horses, particularly thoroughbreds. She asks, please can you do a discussion about thoroughbreds, team racing, or team no racing. I am wanting to buy an off-the-track thoroughbred and am interested to hear other people's views on the racing industry. Always a very hot topic. So, of course, we said yes, and that a specialist topic will be team racing 
or Team No Racing. And of course, we can't miss Queer Out, so there will also have to be a Team Both. We will be publishing this topic, a specialist topic, on Wednesday the 28th of November. So, yes, keep an eye on the website, www.equinedevilsadvocate.com, for the update. That will be Wednesday the 28th of November. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. Results time. We have, in third place... Camp Biscuit, Team New. We have, in second place, Camp Hot Stuff, Team Stella. And we have, in first place, Camp Coya, which is Team Both. So people, let's look a little closer at the whys and the wherefores. Camp Biscuit, Team New is where we will start. So, here are some of your slightly more detailed emails on that selection, that vote. So, we'll start with this one. It's somebody that said, uh, I agree with you. I absolutely adore Stella and her bond with the family. Yet, when I think what is best for Sophia, I think a new horse will suit better because of Stella's ability to jump, canter and more. Another of you said, I see Stella actually as more of a liability than an asset. Sophie is too young and inexperienced for a project horse. Under the present circumstances, I think they should part ways and buy new. Best wishes and good luck. Another of you said, what Stella needs is vastly different from what Sophie needs. And another said, whilst I don't feel there is anything inherently wrong with this horse, she seems like a nice horse, I do feel that she is not the right horse for a newly turned nine-year-old. This person did actually go on to make a very valid point about individuality. She says, she is nine. As a child, every nine-year-old is different and every child is different. It does not matter what the next nine-year-old can do. It matters what this nine-year-old needs at this time. Another of you, Stella is a good horse, but not the best horse for day by day right now. Another one, I agree heavily with getting a new horse. I have watched the blogs for quite some time now, and I just feel that an older, quieter horse a more experienced schoolmaster type would suit them better. As Sophie needs a horse that can teach her, I'm afraid Stella is a little too much horse for little Sophie at the moment. Then there was another lady. I'm assuming it's a lady. I personally have sold two horses because they just weren't right for me. This is not giving up. It is knowing when to walk away. And then somebody else, a very interesting one, this one. She says, Team New, because she feels that Stella has become and looks quite gloomy and depressed lately. Now, mostly all the other very divisive aspects of Camp Biscuit, as in Team New Horse, were mainly to do with Stella's health issues. Not so much the weight, but the hop. So lots of you see this as being the base line reason that you've chosen to make your vote in this direction. It has actually flagged up a big question mark as to Stella's future ability and the direction of her future. We did say on Wednesday to put this to one side as it does require much consideration and Laura did actually mention that in her initial message that Stella was under veterinary care um, yes as we've mentioned there are stories of success through fusing joints and it is a very lengthy process and there are also stories that did not end well at all in fact there was someone who sent in a lengthy very detailed email of such an experience and we'd just like to say many thank yous to you for doing that because we know sometimes it's actually very hard 
to relive and write about such tragedy. There was also another um, very eloquent, lengthy email from someone who, um, on the same topic, was asking how these things are sort of handled here in England. Well, to answer you briefly, I think we are actually extremely fortunate to have very advanced veterinary services at our disposal. In brief, I would expect with a horse in what we would describe as home care, as it is for Stella, that they would be regularly re-X-rayed to identify progress or complications and regular blood profiles would be taken a, so that we could monitor any sort of inflammatory markers and, of course, very important liver and kidney function, which is vital when uh, pain medication is used over a long period of time. We here at Equine Devil's Advocate would also take regular blood tests and do a mineral profile so that we could know that we were feeding the best nutrients needed for the best nutritional health of the horse, particularly if that horse were on a diet. As it is such a lengthy, prolonged process, I think the overview here is to look for um, a longer period of easier exercise that's done more hours throughout the day rather than the short burst of activity that um, some people advocate. I am of course assuming that this is a somewhat standard veterinary care and is available pretty much anywhere in the world and of course hopefully very much to Stella. It is a very difficult process for horses and it is a very lengthy one and yes, as to the outcome, only time will tell. But you have all expressed this with much kindness, I will add. And um, for this reason, it's enough, you feel, for them to take on a new horse for Sophie. So very many thanks to all of you who took the time to write in about it. So now let's move on and we will have a look at second place, Camp Hot Stuff, which of course is Team Stella. Again, so many emails. I took a few and um, let's have a listen to those. I am Team Stella too, as I think that she and Sophie will become an amazing team. Yes, she has health spook problems, but they can be overcome and Stella and Sophie will be a wonderful partnership. Another one said, Team Stella, she is a wonderful mare. Another one, Team Stella, I watch day by day and they are a good family. I think Stella is a good fit for Sophie and they have a good bond. But as I said, it's their choice. I hope they pick the right one. Then this actually is one of the many of you that actually couldn't wait until Wednesday's podcast and went straight to your keyboards. She said, I know you said wait, but I have been watching since before they got their first leased horse. I watched them find Storm and then go on the hunt for another when they found Stella. They have come so far with Stella and made a bunch of progress. I'm sorry I didn't wait. Well, I say to you, that's absolutely fine. It was, after all, a request, not a demand. And she continued... It's just that I have seen what Stella is like, and personally, I am sticking with her. Well, in that, you are not alone, because there were many, many more of you along the same lines that felt very much the same. So, clearly, first place goes to Camp Queer, which is actually Team Both. So, Laura and family, brace your wallet. This is where the leading vote went, actually by quite a substantial margin. So let's take a look at your correspondence and your reasons. Now, here's two that I have chosen because actually I felt they came from a very objective perspective. The first one says, this is a real hard one and I will take a lot of thought from Laura. When you love something so much, it's really difficult to take the right perspective. From watching today's vlog, I wasn't certain that Sophia was sure what she wanted. 
She wanted to stick with Stella, but also wanted a pony that could do everything. So this is where I think you need to make the decision. Stella has health problems and has made Sophia nervous. So ideally, if it were viable, it would be great to get another pony that has been there and done it and keep Stella. But that is going to be mega hard work, keeping three horses. So personally, I am as torn as you. Getting another horse is a minefield in itself, as I have recently found out. So if Laura was to do this, you would need to be very sure on what you want out of the new pony and what suits Sophia and make the list of exactly what it is that you want and stick to it. She also says, good luck, Laura and Sophia. This next one says, I believe Laura has fantastic values in wanting for her children and horse amazing successes in their lives. Although I do not fully know them well and from their YouTube channel only see a limited time with them, I do believe a good consideration for Laura would be for Team Stella and New Horse. I think it might be beneficial if Laura, still confused about the situation and is interested to look at leasing opportunities for her daughter. Yes, she rides well with Stella, but when her self-esteem and confidence is not being knocked down and she, Sophia, does indicate the passion to keep going, yet it is noticeable that Sophie is beginning to create more fears and having anxiety build up more and more. Recently, groundwork, getting off her horse when she believes that there is immediate trouble. I know plenty of past experiences have occurred that we do not fully know why and thus they should be looked at due to the obvious reflection of the behaviours that are currently occurring. Spending time with her and building that bond connection will assist by improving this relationship. They have only purchased her four months ago. With all recent changes in their lives, these can affect the individuals and of course the animals. I am for Team Stella with building a connection and a relationship more with her, which will come in time, understanding her, who she is and what she does. I am also Team New Horse for Sophie's mental health, whether that new horse be purchased, leased or at the current barn, or in fact no horse at all, for a small amount of time where Sophie is given a break to reconnect with her interest and passion. This can cause her to be more invested in the well-being of herself and her horse, and maybe we can truly see how it was affecting both horse and rider. This family is capable of taking care of the horse while Sophie is on little break. The other daughter would be able to briefly ride her or the mother. They also have filmed the father lunging Stella. Therefore, I see the small break between Sophie and Stella very possible. Thank you for reading my words. Now, I will say this is actually very, very clear reading all your correspondence that there is an enormous amount of compassion and love for Stella and Sophie, which is wonderful. Thank you, people. Um, there were many, many suggestions to perhaps leasing a schoolmaster type uh, for Sophia to regain her confidence and have some fun and to develop her skills in riding. And also then perhaps to be reunited with Stella after that when she's ready. There were also many suggestions that Stella would benefit perhaps from some time with a quiet, experienced rider for her to regain her confidence as well and then to be reunited with Sophie. Then there were many, many of you that said team both as you didn't like to actually see Sophia and Stella getting hurt and upset and you felt that a new horse would give both the opportunity to settle back into a place of confidence. And again, there were many more of you that felt, should Sophie have a new lease horse or pony or even a purchase, that would allow Stella the time to actually heal 
um, in a better way for her over a longer period with a, a slower process and more monitoring. And then, of course, you may also be asking, what is our vote? What did we here at Equine Devil's Advocates say? Well, people, this is what we say. Exactly what we said on Wednesday. We can all have an opinion. We can all see a semblance of Laura's dilemma in our own lives and experiences with our horses right now in the present or perhaps from the past. But the experience is truly our own. And whilst it's very nice to be asked, it is an undoubted benefit in listening to others. There is undoubted benefit in learning from others. But the only one who can truly answer the question is the person actually asking it. That being Laura and Sophia. We can have an opinion, but would it carry any more weight, any more influence than any of yours? Wouldn't we then be persuading and perhaps coercing, convincing them of our own choice? And then truly, it is not their choice, their decision. We feel when we respect their decision, then we can join them in that baseline fit and be a part of that picture. And this absolutely applies to the horse as well, this horse, Stella. When we understand her individuality, from this baseline, we can all move forward. We can be instrumental in finding a perfect schoolmaster pony or a horse to lease or buy. We can be supportive of finding a confident rider to help Stella be confident again. We can guide the family to a good trainer who is brilliant at working with fearful nine-year-olds. We can then, in mind and soul, say, yes, I support you in your decision. It's not what I would do, but so be it. Let me help you in your journey. Should it be that Stella needs a new home, let's find her the best one possible. Should it be that she needs better veterinary care or nutrition, let's help find her together the best. If she just needs the support of another calm horse in that dark part of the arena where she spooks and becomes afraid, let her find that confidence giver and let her have that company and that equine calmness to lean on, a friend that she can understand and a friend that supports her. So perhaps you can see that the question remains the same, but the whole picture changes as now we are all on the same page, the same baseline fit. Here in that stripped back baseline formula, that is the beginning of our answer, the place from where we can construct and build further answers to a way forward. Yes, it's hard. It's very hard because it is an objective viewpoint. And what constitutes a good fit? Should it be similarity or should it actually be an opposite, a strength in one, the horse, to combat the weakness of the other, the rider? How many unique, extraordinary fits are there out there? Well, we say masses, so many of them. In fact, all of them, because we are all individuals. And when we know ourselves, we know our strengths and our weaknesses, warts and all, we can know our horses and they can know us. Do we need to know the answers at nine, year, nine years old? Are we equipped to know ourselves at that age? We say, no, absolutely not. But we do know some of ourselves, which is fine because any choices, any decisions that you make now has no need to be set in stone. It can change. It can develop. It can go with the ebb and flow just as life does, like the seasons do. It is inevitably a decision for now. 
but make that decision with clarity, heart and head aligned, but always be open to new possibilities, new opportunities, new knowledge that come your way, and that can also come to the way of your horse. And there is, of course, the most perhaps important correspondence which we did, in fact, receive from Laura herself. I haven't read it, um, so I am going to read it all to you right now. I'm sure you're all dying to hear, and so, consequently, I have saved the best for last. Here we go. Laura says, I listened to your podcast twice from start to finish and attempted to use the formula to find a solution to our problem. So many things listed in the formula were unknown to me. It's hard for me to look back and know what makes Stella happy. And it's hard for me to know what Sophia will want Stella for in the future. If the formula is meant to help me use my head instead of my heart to decide, then perhaps this is how we ended up in this situation in the beginning. My heart is how I make all of our decisions Good or bad, it's what I know and what I believe. If I stick strictly to the facts, then this is how I feel. I have a responsibility to Stella to keep her safe. I absolutely do not feel that she would be better off in another home. We know we may not be knowledgeable enough yet, but we have a team of people ready to help us, and I have no trouble asking for help. Stella has has health issues that require financial upkeep as well as daily exercise requirements. I can't imagine many people out there with as much free time as us or anyone who anyone who would want to buy a horse that requires such a substantial financial commitment. Stella was a trained school horse previously and has demonstrated compassion and patience with us on many more occasions than she has shown us fear. Her two big spooks were caused by us not realizing that she needed time to adapt to her new surroundings. If I buy Sophie a new horse, every time she becomes scared, we will soon have an entire herd of horses as she has become scared of our other horse recently I suspect we need to fix Sophie before we fix Stella who seems to just need a confident rider Stella is the exact perfect horse to teach us about becoming confident right for us or not Stella is our horse we do love her the damage caused by moving from home to home to home may be the entire problem to begin with I absolutely do not ever want Stella to move homes again. I want to teach her to trust us, to love us, and know that she belongs and will always be safe. I do not know if another horse is in our near future. I feel, I feel that we have so much going on with the horses that we do have. We need to spend the time we have learning about them, growing with them. Stella fits our family because she is a part of our family already. We love her, and I think she does love us, or is beginning to love us. We do have two horses, one that can jump, if Sophie wants to jump. I guess in my heart, I know that Stella belongs to us. Why else would God have led us to her? And so there you have it, people. The overall deciding winning vote lands with hot stuff, team Stella and now you know the decision and now you also know where this journey begins so from all of us here at Equine Devil's Advocate we say a big thank you to Laura and Stella and Sophie for putting themselves forward and asking this question and of course don't forget to join us for the next specialist topic question which we will publish on Wednesday the 28th of November we will of course be back tomorrow for our regular Monday episode more of the curse of Tutankhamun so until then wherever you are and whatever you're doing take care and we will speak soon <laughs>